DFA used to stand for Design for Automation. Um, we wanted to automate everything at Ford Motor Company. Um, initially, there was uh, terrible relationships with, uh, between the uh, union and management, and, um, and we, we had a lot of issues. And, and so some bright guys up at the top of the house said, what we need to do is design products so that robots can put everything together. And that's initially why I was hired. That's what, what I used to do was, uh, was uh, uh, work on robotics and make things happen uh, using um, uh, automation and, and machine tools. Well, uh, as luck would have it, and as time went by, we found out that we couldn't do that. So we had to design for automation. And so uh, we had, first off, it was designed for automation. That was simple automation. Then it went to design for robotics. And then it went for design for assembly because what we found out was that if we designed the products properly for um, automation or robotics, you couldn't really justify automation or robotics because the, a man could do it cheaper, faster, and better. <clears throat> That's why um, in the 80s, people used to put all these benchmarking tours out and they said, oh, Ford's way behind the curve when it comes to uh, robots and whatnot. In actuality, we didn't need them. <laughs> but the idea was to make money, not to fill up the factory with a bunch of, uh, a bunch of uh, pieces of automation. It wa that wasn't our objective. Our objective was make money for shareholders. And that's exactly what we did when we started designing the product, utilizing um, first uh, DFA, then DFR, then DFM, which looked at both manufacturing and the assembly process. And then we went to lean design because it didn't address the uh, DFM and DFA and all the other stuff. They didn't address the one thing that we really, really needed, and that was how do we make more money uh, for the shareholders? How do, we, how do we keep business? It's not just with assembly or manufacturing. It's with a holistic uh, kind of approach. So we moved away and started focusing our attentions on, uh, on quality. And the quality aspect of, uh, there's a, an aspect inside of Lean Design called uh, cost to quality and, um, or the quality report card and that focused our attentions on predictive costing for quality or predictive um, implementation of high quality methods. That's pretty much what we um, uh, implemented um, after that, after I left Ford. Actually, Dr. Deming, <laughs> Dr. Deming is the reason I left Ford. He, um, he just felt that I was wasting my time and, uh, and I had to leave. So um, his last the words when I was at Ford was, uh, in essence, if you don't leave, you're going you're gonna to wind up like one of these guys. And he was standing right in front of Red Polling. And Red was the president of the company at the time. So I figured it must be time to go. <coughs> um, my career is over. <laughs> so, uh, so starting up the company was... Uh, was what we did and when we started up the company we started using the term uh, lean designs. It didn't, it didn't affect the approach but it certainly automated everything. Everything went ultimately hugely fast. Um, now we could take on an airplane. We could fill up, uh, we, could, uh, uh, we could analyze a whole airplane. Um, in the past we could, you could get as big as maybe uh, putting in an engine or something like that into a paper method. But when we started to move into, uh, into computerization of all this stuff, all of a sudden now, uh, well, our first big project was the C-17. We analyzed that in, uh, in lean design software, and uh, that just, I mean, that just turned everything around. We pulled $42 million out of the cost of each one of those aircraft.